Rothfire is still the leader. Here comes the blood now. Alligator blood on the outside. Stormed up and took over. Alligator blood's in front. Flashing late. Private eye. But alligator blood from the straight back from private eye. Welcome to Bet Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I'm in studio with the white hot John Walter. I was with him all day Saturday, and I tell you what, he was just picking him out of every orifice in his body. I think the only bloke hotter is Reese Jones. How are you, Walt? Mate, I'm just blocking, jucking and weaving. I'm trying to stay hot away from all you people cast with bird flus, man flus, kid flus, whatever you got. You're all sick. Hmm. Stay that- away from me. What happened? Turbo's dead. Apparently, we've killed him. <laughs> Ninja cockle. Oh, my God. They're going down like flies around here. Yeah, there's a fair bit happening. And I think uh, DK, a little check into DK. Last week, he was cactus. This week? Well, he had a broken nah. heart last to- week, suspect. Yeah, well, it? yeah, that, yeah, Flea yeah heart. So it's turned turn into a crack rib, like, absolutely. Cactus me, fuck. There is absolutely no tip in the world if you ever get bruised dribble cact grip. Every time I cough, every time I sneeze, roll in bed, mate, it's like someone's just punched me in the chest. Oh, but anyway, I got here. I'm in here. I made it in. How are you, Nico? You're in better shape than me? Uh, it wouldn't be hard, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> I think I'm definitely in better shape than DK at the moment. <laughs> oh, mate. The kid said to me last night at footy training, are we playing kick? Because we was in kick tennis. I've got this game called kick tennis where you kick. And then we do dads versus kids, and they give me, we play and kick tennis, we play and kick tennis, and I take training Wednesday nights. I said, there's no kick tennis. I said, and I, when we do play it, I will not be, I'm done for life, kick tennis. I'm not 27 anymore. I'm an old man. So they weren't too happy with that, but I gave them goal kicking instead. They, went, they, they kept them happy. So super, <laughs> super rules, DK, you ruled out a comeback? Well, and that's rules? what the other, that's what someone said to me tonight. They're, they're like the seconds are running low, like we've got so many injuries and that. And they said, have you ever get tapped on the shoulder when you're in your 40s? So I just, just fill in for a quarter, will you? In the forward pocket or back pocket or do something. You'll be sweet. Yeah, just a reminder. Mate, you know, your body's not up for it. So um, it was a good reminder to say that I'll never, ever, ever say yes. Now that's something like that. It uh, takes me back to uh, Convo with Anthony Don, the ex-NRL player, and uh, they're trying to get us to play uh, Super Rules for Broad Beach Cats, and then Tristan uh, pipes up and says, no, nah, come play nines at the Top Sport Turtles. The Turtles. If, if Walt plays, I'll play a game with the Top Sport Turtles. Is it AFL? I'll, yeah, it's AFL. I'll be untouchable. I'll, I'll, I'll be unstoppable. <laughs> I'm tell- I swear to God, bigger hands I would have been in the NBA, uh, <laughs> AFL, anything, whatever you want. You haven't got a bad little, field. If you get your feet. Girl hands just cost me. <laughs> so about oh. dollar fifty do an Achilles in the first quarter. If you get past that, you're about dollar ten to do a hammy by half time. And then uh yeah, if you cop a bump or something, it'll be the end of you. So mate, just swerve away from that, Scooty. Swerve. We're yeah. athletes in this side of the world. That's why we moved to the Gold Coast, mate. Home of the athletes. Exactly. All the stars are born here. Nick Rewalt's probably one of them. Adam Adam Scott. There's a couple of good golfers. I don't know who else. <laughs> anyway, there's the all the all the superstars are over at Royal Ascot. Has anybody anyone been watching? Nature Strip got the chocolates absolutely bolted in. Stayed, stayed up for that. that was, how good was that? Mm. I don't, nothing much excites me, as you know, these days, except uh, occasionally, <laughs> obviously back in a winner, self-interest and all the people have been loyal subs, but nothing else really worries. But I stayed up for that, and that was fantastic. Like, just sticking it to them. No, I was sticking, not sticking to the palms, but the best thing for me was the corporates did their absolute clacker of it. There was no hot. They tried to hide, betting buddy 280 to 320 chance, but they just they just got loaded up with it because all their wrecks just are piling the Nature Strip. And it's early in the week, you know. It's not like they can get the churn back out of them on a Saturday or something from back in a winner. So they've done their absolute clacker on it. And we cheer in home affairs hard to uh, to do the same on uh, whenever he runs on the weekend. Nice and angry, DK. I love this. Anyone uh, anyone we know in the Royal Carriage Parade last oh. night? John Walter, I'll let you feel this one. I, t- I, t- I tell you what, I enjoyed Nature Strip 2 um, and it was incredible, the win. Like, yes, I said, like, you don't win by six like that over a 1,000 oh. and whatever, until James McDonald came back. Even then I was, like, happy. And then he high-fived a fella as he entered the ca- the bird cage, and I nearly threw up. But my, I don't probably want to mention him because I don't need any more trouble in my life, but it's just amazing the uh, the entourage that's over there currently. Oh, that was who I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought they looked very familiar, that big fella. Uh, like yeah. a smaller version of Gary Harley. Yep, that's <laughs> who? exactly who it was. Yep. Oh, so what, Richie's over there, mm. PVL's over there. Yeah, how mm. do you not get a gig? Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. Actually, one of our one of our members Jay is Carr's missing over out there. of the chat. I think he might be over there. I think everyone's over there at the moment. But uh, it, yeah, it's uh, a ah, good on them. Good on them. Hope they enjoy it. Hey, there's some good Dan Cobbies over there. I say it's amazing. Um, like those owners, as I think, you know, Ross Lyons, and they've been in the game a long time. They were loyal with Tony Vassell back, and then they've had this horse. But oh, it's just amazing how, like Jack Van Duren, he's one of those. He's been in every horse. He's a great mate of Rod Lyons. He's he's cactus. He's got cancer. The doctor said, "Don't go." He's in a wheelchair. He said, "I'm going." I'm going. Good and on he him. got there and watched his horse win, you know, and the horse won for him, you know. The, 
the amazing alligator blood, the bloke's wife, yep. Joy, she she stayed stayed alive till he won and then carked it, you know, the horse. You know, Holmesman, when Gadinsky died, Holmesman got up and stuck his head out at 20 to 1 in the Australian Cup. It's amazing, the, just that connection that the, you know, you got a dead or sick owner or something, the, the, uh, the horses just, just grow, find, find a leg, I tell you. They do say that group of owners are dead set legends like that rod line, and then they say they're absolute champions. Like they're mad punters, though. Punters, that's as well. it. Yeah, like and Paddy, you know. between Paddy, Rod, and Dave Trev, and they they bet, they drink, and they race horses, and they're absolutely fearless. And I think um, you said it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, owners don't really care about the prize money, and there's a classic example. They've taken a horse across across to the UK. Yeah. They're racing for nothing, and they're just doing it for the love of it. And that's why exactly why the extra you know two million they put on a race or five hundred thousand, the money's just better spent elsewhere because once you get a horse up to that level, it doesn't make much of a difference. You hear, so, you hear his quote. It was like something like, oh, yeah, I've I've had some really good results in racing." Blah blah blah. He said, "I'm here wearing this stupid hat and I'm having the day of my life," or something yeah. like it was. It was. Uh, it was. Oh, it's a different level that place. It's incredible. But um, ah, good, good, and and they handle it so well. Like that, he's been out here. He's probably kept Australian sprinting going for the last two or three years, nearly single-handedly with Eduardo, and, and then gone over there. And, and it wasn't too late, which is the best. I thought he was a big chance of going over there and being a bit flat, but he crushed him. Mm, speaking of the, uh, the, the the top hats, uh, a little hat tip to Nico all over alligator blood. Hope you suck fat and uh, and bet up there, Nico. Alligator blood. Yeah, it was a good result. Uh, he was just charging home down the middle there, wasn't he? The race was kind of over at the the four hundred. He sort of loomed up to him, and there was uh, there was no dangers. Private Eye was probably a bit stiff back to the fence if you're on him, but uh, no yeah. dangers. It, it should have won be six, but anyway, <laughs> that's all right. I'm in your care. I'm happy for you. <laughs> I, I don't think you would have beat him. Um, I think Alligator Blood off the figures, he's probably a length, length and a half off his best. But at his best, he was one of the better horses we had. So. Um, I think uh, he could be in for a good spring, Alligator Blood. Do you want my? Good to see on, back. Give you the early mail here. I'll try and, and find uh, it. I think Walt Walt was sort of uh, in the same sort of m- f- mind frame with uh, the strong sixteen hundred meter r- horses. There, she's a belter was uh, a good winner. I was sort of more that form line, but you guys sort of grade me up. And sharp and smart was the one that all the money came. We for. grade you up. No, oh, I sort of liked it early, and then I sort but of. They, got, were they uh, all, no, you're right. I think you're right, Scoot. They're all. Oh, I didn't, as I said, I wasn't paying too much attention. They were, were they all potting it? Weren't you all around it? I was definitely potting you it. You guys said the other, the form Just go was... back to the blood for a sec. So his preliminary program, don't quote me on this, uh, PB, Lawrence, Memzi, Maccabi Diva. Yeah. That's his Alligator blood. That's the blood, yeah, the blood for the spring. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. And when, you, when you go back to it, the uh, the 1500 on the backup might have just taken um, a bit of the sting out of a horse like Sharp and Smart and probably wants further, but... She's a belter. Was still a really good run, even though it was it was three wide back in Mordor, and everyone wanted to poo poo that race. So, a little well, Pike outrode him. That huh? was it. At the end of the day, if, if if Smart gets the run, she's a belter had, which it probably should have. Mm. It, it probably gets home. Well, it's the size produce. It's just a better setup. The fourteen hundred sixteen uh, and two weeks between them. So, um, yeah, I was sort of kicking myself there and uh, kiss. Um, what level? I think he's headed to the what is it? Thirty million dollar. Golden Eagle. Well, by the time it gets there, it'll be thirty, I'd say. It might be forty. <laughs> Depends if you know the Saudis chip in and make it a golf event as well. <laughs> it's um, yeah, far out. Like it, honestly, neutrally, you look at all their social media posts when they post all this. I've never seen one. Oh wow, how good! It's always who's funding this? What's the like? And this is not just Twitter. It's Facebook everywhere. You look at them. There's not ever one bit of. Positive feedback, and the only time it's ever used is by breeders in their um, in their marketing. Mm-hmm. It could get you a seat in the royal carriage one day, so you can't poo poo it all your life, Walt. DK, you're back on song. Uh, found a win the other day in uh, Swan Hill Carnival. What did you uh, What did you make of that? We had a horse go and miss, which was a bit disappointing. Uh, one of ours, Royal Court, that we bought at, uh, as a tried horse, so he's at the chiropractor today. Uh, but uh, that's where you probably should be going, DK. How yeah, are you seeing yeah. them at the moment? Uh, I just can't get like yeah. Uh, well, Swan Hill made a boo boo. Uh, just bro- you know, gave a horse the benefit off a thousand meter race, and even though he was proven eleven hundred, he wasn't proven at twelve hundred. And some first starter got over. He, he was put. He was disappointing anyway. As you know, anyway, that's it. That's made a boo boo. You pay for that. Then we have got a winner. As opposed to that, we have got a strong horse home Monday at Mornington. Three wide the trip, heavy ten. No worries, you know. Home you go. You're a strong, proven strong horse, which is that's what I'm trying to find. But then. 750 to 320, couldn't get the job done at Ballarat on Tuesday, you know, and that's been the story of the year. Last year, they were winning those things, and I haven't had one plunge horse, you know, they've been sort of 
Holden Square on bread and butter, but um, can't get one. I can't get a seven. You know, can't get a big odds into the line yet. So anyway, but uh, we'll keep Pepper and I. Um, yeah. So yeah, just need one. Just need one good result, Scoot. I reckon. Get get, get, get kick off. And uh, Nico, this is maybe one for you. Triple Missile was a pretty good winner in the uh, the Golden Top has. What level can it get to? Nice horses. Yeah, he's he sort of come awesome. over here from Perth. He was well exposed in Perth. Like he was uh, probably just below that winter bottom sort of um, sprinting rank that they have over there. He was probably looking towards a race like that. I, I think maybe he got to 1,400 and he won sort of a bit tradesman-like at Flemington. I think probably 1,200 he might be better. He just seems like he has a bit more of a dynamic turn of foot at that at that distance. I, he's definitely group class. Um, I would imagine races like the Bletchingly and the Ori Star, not in too long of um, – not too far away now getting into the back end of the season sort of early next season i think they're probably right up his alley and if he can handle these wet tracks like it seems like he can um he's probably right in a lot of those races that's him that's him you got a, that, that was a ripper turn of footy show there ridden ridden cold at 1200 you know and Lindsay, Lindsay, give him a good rap Lindsay, give him a good rap track played pretty fair as well track, like, track was track was fantastic usually like, the friday you, they you look like, be on speed didn't they? they look like they're going to get what late in the day first day they got wide and then yeah. oh here we go and then that was fine they had the track i heard jay noonan say so the track was in fantastic order, and um, yeah, they see what they did. So th th that's the thing. They couldn't get accommodation. Jay Noon and Jay Fry and D Holland couldn't get accommodation there. So I went and got the RVs, hired the RVs, and parked them at the at the Riverside, the Grouse Caravan Park, the big four there <laughs> instead, and stayed in them. So there's no excuses for no accommodation. It's good, not a bad idea, you know. They're already got those nice RVs, got everything you need. And Jay Fry win the cup. Did he on Paul's regret? He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. Jay Fry. He, he won the cup. Yeah, Paul's regret. Um, I think I didn't. Yeah, Pro consent was loomed up and was oh, disappointing. Was wasn't bolting it? on the corner for yeah. Harry, sort of local local town hero there, and it looked like he was going to win. And then Lindsay flew at him late with Adelaide Ace trying to go back to back, so he nearly yeah. took the the chocolates in both the features. But uh, it'll be. Yeah, Paul's I, I, I like it going forward as a meeting because because of that nice big long straight. There's really nowhere to hide, um, and it gives them a good base. So it's a carnival. So principally for my provincial racing, I'm, I don't know if they'll go to Metro, but. Um, Provincial racing, horses coming out of that carnival, it's, I reckon it gives them a good base. It's a carnival where nowhere to hide in the straight, you know. Um, you can bounce off that into um, into lesser races or less carnival sort of races, you know. So I'll be uh, yeah, keeping an eye on the form there for sure. I think it's uh, 1800 a week for the RV. Do you reckon you and Walt would uh, bunk up in an RV? Well, Was it 1800 for the week? I think so, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, I'm going to have to rethink that. Eighteen hundred. Oh, I'll share it if you can. You can bunk in with Walt. No, just you two, uh, and we'll no, live stream no, no. the whole RV. No. Yeah, <laughs> come on, mate. <laughs> come on, I'll mate. Get in, I'll get in early and book the cabin. Like Big Brother, <laughs> all right? You and Walt. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Big Brother saw it. Big Brother. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Come on, mate. All right, this oh, is. Um, no, I don't. I don't share rooms. I don't even share it. No, no. I don't share it no. with my wife, but I share it with you. <laughs> Oh, this is our uh, this is our final bet doctor show before a winter break. I think oh, I need to freshen up. Uh, Borka, yeah, you, just our, uh, you just been to Hamilton yeah. Island. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to freshen up. It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do Saturday? I went to the football. Oh, Jesus, yeah, it's been tough. You've had a you've had a you've had a tough run. I'll give you that. Yeah, you're really struggling. <laughs> I need a little bit of a break. And, and Borka, our uh, TV engineer, he needs a, a break too. So we're just going to have a little bit of a freshen up and. Now that all the pop-up races and everything spills over from spring and Perth sort of heats up, it'll allow us to go a little bit closer to Chrissy. So I think um, what do you mean? It's just a better quality bit races. Sickos huh? like us, we go every day. We don't we don't have breaks. We don't have to worry about you know having a break now, so we can miss a break then. We just charge through. <laughs> well, break from the show. What, what? DK this gets is to our sleep this is our actual thing we look forward to every week. Well, you're taking about they've taken away the one good thing I actually have <laughs> in my life. Oh, sorry, the kids, the kids and the wife. Oh Jesus Christ, she's probably listening now. <laughs> my my missus said, "Oh, we, we go away. You want to go to Bali or something? Or can we go to your high school holidays or something?" Can't, can't, can't. No hope. Got to work. Just got to subscribers. <laughs> Look out for the subs. Can't be doing form sitting on the beach in Bali. I'll still be working. <laughs> it's a working <laughs> holiday for me. He goes, oh, yeah, don't worry, I'll be taking your second screen. What does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean you're really going to plug in and charge through the work? Oh my god, I'm taking a second screen. Tell you what, the fields is Saturday. I wish I was uh, going out Friday night, but uh, we're flying out Sunday. Manscaped is something that I will be taking to Bali. It's uh, the weed whack is an absolute pearler. If you're stuck for ideas for your old man or uh, one of your mates or uh, an in-law or an outlaw or whoever, make sure you get the weed whacker and they can just put it straight up the beak. I think Bailey Smith uses them as well. So if you want the runways nice and clear, uh, I think Manscaped uh, weed whacker is the go. Do you know who Bailey Smith is? Absolutely no idea. Of, of course you don't. 
So it's uh, Little Birdies, a promo code, and manscaped.com. Anyway, today's show, Tommy Henjack, as uh, Walt said, I don't know if it's manager Cockle, he's been struck down with something. I think he was on a Mark Miranda after Stradbroke Day. Maybe so- Big Bertha rolled over. He might have the crack ribs like uh, DK. <laughs> what was the pub he was talking about at the Stratty? Uh, Clout? No, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't know. know. Bojangles or the bloody... I don't know. Whatever it was called. Anyway, it's Ipswich Cup Day. He's still uh, sent through his best bets, so it's a real white belt, white shoes combo, Ippy. But uh, I saw a little, snip, little snippets on Sky Racing the other day, and it looks like the facility's got a little bit of a facelift. So Ipswich is on the up. It, 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 like... A property, like actually, Ipswich is actually becoming like a, a, a like a centre. It's crazy. They're just building so much out there and spending so much on the area. So it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Would the, you move out there? The racetrack up. Uh, that, that's a that's on the left side of the highway. So that's. <laughs> oh. I reckon they'd have a good bowling centre, Ipswich, wouldn't they? Yeah, they I don't, would. I don't know if they do. To be fair, they got one at Aspley or somewhere. I nearly ended a tournament there, but I don't know where it is, and it sounds like a snake. So I was a bit Isn't scared. Another. F- Flood prone, flood prone area though they got up there. Didn't they get wiped out? That's probably why they're building everything. They, another one of those joints that gets flooded. Mugs yeah. Moral this week. He needs to lift. He's had a couple of uh, rocky weeks. Rose Hills his home deck, so this could be his time. Uh, no luck with uh, Yankees last week, but uh, if you're uh, in the what, racingwatch.com.au chat room, uh, the Discord channel in there, you can uh, find plenty of winners. Waltz, Waltz Jeez, on a heater. Happy when, yeah, I think I, like, I went to the old, what the other one was, I can't remember, the Aquasauce, and Kathy just put the right-hand blinker on and went hard fence when it was 25 lengths slower. Then go, <laughs> go, Kath, go, Kath. <laughs> and the top sports team is uh, they, uh, the early money there, had a 2K bet on She's a Belter at 480, so they got the chocolates. Uh, Nico Noonan's got Flemington this week, so he'll be up first. Happy hunting ground for Nico, generally speaking. So he'll be up and about. Uh, top sport, they're family-owned and operated. Uh, and you just can't beat an Australian-owned bookies. There's a lot of uh, hoo-ha over uh, social media channels at the moment about uh, this, you know, this fair play coalition. But I tell you what, the fairest bookie on the uh, on the planet is Top Sport. They bet up uh, the biggest, and they uh, tip the money back in the community. I think they sponsor the Titans, and uh, they sponsor lots of uh, grassroots things, and the money stays in Australia. Oh, oh, if, oh, if, you can pay me that one. I did call that correctly last week, didn't I? I did not say Tab Cork. But that sounded like with that Queensland POC tax decision. But they'd been lobbied by Tabcorp, but they hadn't just been lobbied by Tabcorp. They'd been lobbied by this this crew, this fair coalition, fair play coalition, because that announcement just looked hand in glove with the Tab, you know. So um, yeah, they're, they're they're attacking, they're they're after the corpse. So I don't don't like the chances of our our ten percent just they're sticking after the down corpse, here. but they're not going to get the corpse. They're going to get us. It's great. It's a yeah, great. Well, it's yeah, a great yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think they're they're about ten years late with this strategy. Like I, the horse is bolted, but like they're often gone. They've lost so much market share. And On they, the Tab. Uh, yeah. Oh well, there's got to be there's got to be a reason they've driven the tab into the ground. They've got to. What there's is got it? to be a reason for it, and it still continues. But I don't know what this coalition thing is. It's just laughable. But anyway, maybe it's a cover. It's got to be a new new big bookie, and I see they tried to the, they tried to uh, buy out or well, buy points bets Australian arm the 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 uh, Herald Sun whatever they're called News Corp and Trip operation. They tried to buy to get some scale to start with. They got knocked back, and um, I see they're adver- they're all advertising now, so they'll be up and going. By the end of the, I suppose by the end of the year, they'll try and get up and go. Might be by spring carnival, so another, you know, and they won't, they won't muck around because they've got the advertising and all the uh, media arm. So, um, you know, what about, I, I what like about this? What about if PVL jumped the fence to the corporates? <laughs> then what would happen to the taxes? Imagine if you then went into bat for the corpse to reduce. The, oh, that now that could be a swing of events. Mm. That it, could actually be good for us. One of the f- go PVL. One of the best I saw was that you know the, the spruiking this you know bet Australian. I think the largest shareholder in Tabcorp is Vanguard and BlackRock. So just go and go Google and um, do some research on, on who those people are. They don't take it lying down, though. I tell you, the corps, they've got their own every, – every one of those big corps have got their own government relations mm. employee, and they've got the old responsible – I think they call themselves Responsible Wagering Australia, which is all the corps group. And Scoot, get to the CEO of Responsible Wagering Australia. Harry Madden. Big Harry Madden from the so he, well, he, well, he don't, but he's a politician, so he, he's a politician, so that's all. What was all he involved in go- once upon a time? Uh, now you got me there. Mm. Okay. NFL game, just, go- just Google John Madden, it. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll uh, you can do some digging into there, so you'll, you'll go down a, uh, a bit of a rabbit hole there. But uh, I tell you what, it's just so simple open up a top sport account, uh, they're family owned and operated, it's Australian, and I tell you what, Lloyd and Tristan and uh, the family do and a great job. So it's just, with it's them, so, it's I'm so pretty simple. sure you get on the phone, get on the blow and sort it out. Yeah, so yeah. easy, they'll let you on. So mm. that's where I'll be putting my business, and that's uh, a major reason why we're sponsored by Top Sport. 
is because uh, we believe in Australian-owned bookies. So make sure you check them out. We're going to start talking about racing for something different, and we're going to have a look at race two at Flemington. And Nico uh, is well known for his uh, hot starts. And a bit of a shout-out to Nico. You found uh, back-to-back $9 chances uh, yesterday at Sand. And i tell you what, the track was just uh, an abomination there yesterday. So you did pretty well to uh, find a winner there. But uh, race two at Flemington on Saturday is a country racing Victoria handicap over 1,000 metres. We've got Grand Pope favourite here at two ninety from the Nick Ryan yard. Uh, Diamonds is second pick at $5. Starlight Scope, eight fifty. Little Stevie, $10. And... NASA Y is eleven dollars, and uh, Rye Gill Star is eleven. The replay we're going to have a look at is Grand Pope, and he's in the blue with the uh, the yellow spade, Nick Ryan colours. Yeah, he's last. I don't really want to watch this again, but uh, he definitely should have won this day. But this was eleven hundred. He comes back to a thousand on Saturday, which is probably the only concern. If he stayed at eleven hundred, I think he'd be a complete moral. Um, he still could be over a thousand. He does drop a lot in the weight. He goes from fifty nine and a half down to fifty five and a half. McNeil gets his redemption. The horse that wins this race, Diamonds, is also in this race on Saturday. I think he definitely should have beat her, run home in the fastest last four and two of the race. Um, I think if he finds a gap a bit earlier and potentially got a bit better of a ride on that occasion, he would have beat her. Um, as I said, he drops back to the 1,000 here, but the big drop in the weights, and I think they're just training him a bit different this prep. He's never seen a 1,000 metres, but they seem to be training him like a real sprinter, whereas a few preparations have sort of Look to get him out to sort of 1,400 and 1,300 metres. Now, he jumped out like a rocket coming into this prep, and I think they've just uh, found the key to him. He had a big win down the straight to sort of end his campaign last preparation. They've obviously aimed him at the straight first up. They're keeping him here. Draws Barry number 11, like the widest gate, nearly. Um, hopefully, McNeil doesn't find the same sort of trouble that he found last start. And I think with that big weight drop, uh, the weight swing on diamonds, everything sort of in his favour. And this is a lot weaker race. Uh, I thought 290. Very respectable. He'll be flying at him late. Like, he, there could be every chance he's unlucky again. That's the kind of horse he is. But if he gets that luck, I think he will win. It looks to be, um, I think, in his favour, there's a bit, a bit of speed here, you know. Yeah. Young, young Liam and all that. They won't, there'll be no loafing there. So um, that'll help him. But you're right. That the, when I looked at it, I said, oh, back to 1,000. You know, and he's had seven, he has had, no, had 17 career starts and never never had a run over the 1,000. But like you said, um, you know, my training a bit differently. And who's to doubt Nick Ryan, you know, if you land on Nick Ryan, if you... You just got to play because he's such a good trainer and knows what he's doing, and his horses run so well. Um, but yeah, we'll be at the back. But uh, yeah, uh, the, I think the tempo will help him. And um, yeah, you know, looks looks a good good way to start the day. Nicky, you've given away the Eagles, Craig, mate. That was the last nail in the coffin for the Friday provincials, oh, wasn't it? <laughs> Eagles, <and> Craig. <laughs> what a cat! Had every single chance, didn't it? Just loomed up like it was going to win. Just, it couldn't go past. <laughs> Paddy Paynes or something, they're running through brick walls. Uh, every That's time, good. I was talking about this yesterday with my mates. Every time I find Paddy or Billy, they seem to go no good. No good. And any time I don't back them, they just he's seem had, to beat me. He's had 30 winners in the last three oh. weeks. <laughs> they did that in the um, in that two-year-old race, the Elvstrom Classic. Same thing. That the Quang Tri led. King's Consort just ran to it like it was going to run past it. And, and then, then kicked. And same as the Mr. Pickwick and your bloody thing equals Craig. So, no, he's running. The horse is running through brick walls, Paddy's. I um, wish he didn't bring that up. I The toys came straight out of the cot when he got beat. That was the most gutless performance I've seen in a long time. Uh, Couldn't have had a better run, could it? <laughs> Couldn't every, have had a better run. Possible. It was just, I don't know what the in-play was, but oh, yeah. anyway. Flemington race five, no replays here. There's a couple of uh, different form lines here, but let's talk about it because it's uh, probably the most exciting race for the day, the Creswick Stakes, and you've got Star Patrol $2.50 favourite from the Clint McDonald Yard. Revitalised this horse. Passive, aggressive. Beggy's uh, lightly raced horse. Karakasu who's uh, putting up big figures over in Adelaide at $6, and Pasero is $12. I am me's no slouch either at $16, and you've got horses like Winning Verse and Gimme Par out of the market with Ice Pick Nick. Fascinating uh, contest this, Nico. After last start, I thought uh, Star Patrol might be chinky when I, when I started to have a look at this race and start to pull it apart. What did you think? Yeah, I sort of thought that on the day. Um, I thought his win probably wasn't as important. Well, definitely wasn't as, as impressive as his win prior, but he actually rated better, know, which was time, interesting. The time was fine, wasn't it? Mm. Which means the Moody horse went terrific out back action, which had been pressing to do that off what it did in its maiden. Like it, yeah. it ran fast time at Mornington. Yeah, it, it, it's a nice horse out back action. Uh, I think I had it on top from the yard. So I, yeah. I, I do like Star Patrol. I think he's just he's got a bit sort of um, to come mentally. I think he's not the fully finished product yet in terms of the yard, and he still will mature, but he's a big sort of 
big beast of a sprinting type, massive hind quarter. And he does have to carry 59 here, so he goes up from 54. But his two last start wins down the straight at Flemington put him in at least sort of group two class if he can replicate those figures. And you are comparing apples to apples here. He ran over the 1,100 metres last night and passive aggressive also ran over the 1,100 metres and he's rated about three lengths better. Um, I thought sort of two weeks ago after she won, like she's also a really impressive type to look at. Um, I was sort of taken back by her. I thought I'd probably be leaning her way in the Creswick, but I did think she'd be more like $4, $4.50 and he'd be, you know, sort of in your eighty range than mm. compared to two fifty and two sixty. Uh, I think just with the level he's got to so far, I think if he can hold that, I reckon he'll beat her. Um, there's every chance she improves, but I think he only has to hold his level. So I'd be sort of leaning his way. Uh, I had a good look at Karakasu and Pashiro to see if they could get near him, and I, I just, I think it's one or the other. I couldn't really get near the other two, so I'm probably leaning Star Patrol, um, and I think the market may also do that. That's also coming early. I mean, she's only early. She's only at least he's got a bit. He's got seasoning under his belt. Yeah, you know, it's she's all coming. Prep, she's like, coming very quickly for her, so she's just that's always going to be that from going on to it. Whether she can keep keep elevating, you know, first prep, you know. And I think the other interesting part of this race is like Star Patrol Preble got off said last start and said he probably made a blue, holding him up a bit early. Um, he thinks he might just let him run a bit more here. So given that, they're sort of two horses that could take each other on. But then you throw in Winning Verse as well, who ran really quick time at Caulfield last start, leading quick to the six hundred. I think she probably leads them both. So. Where that sort of leaves mm. both of them, I reckon they're both probably second and third. Uh, this this is probably the most exciting race we've, we've got to deal with in Melbourne for about three months now. I think a lot of people have been looking forward to this, and yeah, I don't think it'll disappoint. What about the jump out of Pasiro? And this is an interesting one. I, I thought this horse has got a little bit of ability here, but um, I'm surprised he's sort of come back so quickly. Yeah, I don't know what he's what he's in for. Maybe they're looking at sort of the Silver Bowl series maybe later in the in the sort of uh, in the winter here, I thought the jump out was good. Um, typical of Buston Young, though, not many of their horses trial badly, so I don't think it's the greatest guy. He does have ability, and I think he'll be better this prep than sort of last year. Was another who's a bit sort of behind mentally compared to a few of the others, and I think he won a few of those races on raw ability. But uh, yeah, I definitely think he's going to be better suited to sort of twelve fourteen hundred, not getting out to a mile. Um, but yeah, I couldn't sort of have him debate the other two. Well. No, I was, I, thought, I was happy you mentioned winning verse. I just thought it went like an absolute rocket last up, beat a couple of nice horses, like left him in at dust. So I, I'd be interested to see how it goes. He's a bit it, – like it's got ability, lightly raced, and just thought it had a bit of spice at whatever price it is. Went around at 40, so one by about five. Mm. It was hard if, to get if your head you around. It, if you watched its first up run, you wouldn't have taken 40s. So, uh, yeah, no, and, and I just yeah. – yeah, it's a bit of an enigmatic. It's, it, it's two-year-old form was all right, so it'll, it'll add a bit of spice. The other race we're going to have a look at is race seven, the Sir Henry Bolt handicap over two thousand meters. Oceana Blue is four dollars into three sixty here in favourite. Bigolino is seven dollars. Uh, Natural Mystique seven dollars. The Claimant eight fifty. Secret Glamour nine dollars. Commander Harry nine fifty. And uh, there's been a couple of scratchings. Naval Seal has been scratched, and so's uh, Kapangi. But the replay we're going to have a look at here is Oceana Blue in the Wanless colours here. So the grey with the uh, the nose roll here. And the yellow seams. Yeah, I was sort of... This race, I thought, was the key form reference, given she come out of it, and the horse behind her in the purple, Naval Seal, was down to run in this race, but now he's been scratched. I was kind of worried he was a big danger here, but now he's come out. I think this makes her task a bit easier. She started at 1,800 metres first up and ran the some really quick closing sectionals behind uh, Aravine, or Aravine, is it, who went and started favour in the Queensland Oaks, and she dropped back to a mile... This day, the most impressive part of her race probably was through the line. Um, through the line, she goes right past Hop on Harry and sort of looking at her first up, thought there was improvement to come and I thought she ran enormous there. Then last start, back to the mile, just was never going to suit her. She was wide the trip there on a day you didn't really want to be. Um, this looks her set up, 2,000 metres, getting to Flemington. She's a big hawk. She's got a big stride on her. Barry number 11, McDougal. Seems to have a good affinity with Moody. Um, he's not going that well at the moment, McDougal, but uh, he seems to give Moody's every single chance. And I just think with this sort of race, um, I reckon you want to be looking for fresh blood in these sort of 2,000-meter races. It sort of it panned out that like that last year. A lot of these horses are coming through the same race. Um, last start behind uh, the Bus and Young horse that run. Matsuka comes through El, that race. Elva done. Yeah, Natural Mystique started $2.50 there. It looked like he had sort of every possible chance. There's a few of them in there that are sort of, 
Yeah, the second horse ran second at like 300 to one. That was my, that was my thing, country's life. Yeah, yeah, like it was just a, a funny old race and a lot of them come through that. I think looking for the di- the different form here could be uh, could be big and she is that and I think she's the best horse in this race. So now Naval Seals come out, I'm probably even keener to back her at sort of uh, $3 plus. I didn't really find a danger. I think it's wide open outside of her if she doesn't win. So, um, yeah, I was kind of happy to see her in the yard and sort of decide whether I bet up after that and see how the track's playing. But if everything's sort of um, ticking the boxes there, I'll be I'll be having a crack, I think. Yeah, no, she's um, she's. I remember, I remember her maiden win at um, Geelong was huge. I remember she's out the back and wide all the way and just rounded them up, um, was well backed. And then that, that 1800 first up was interesting placement. I mean, you know. Where, where's he going to for that? I, mean, I reckon they were trying to get her to the Queensland Oaks and it just come up a bit too soon. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but geez, um, geez, she's got Flemington 2,000 metres and 2,000 plus stamped all over, hasn't she? Yeah. So, uh, And you're right, fresh legs like natural mystique. Are we talking about getting deep in the first prep? Well, I didn't see many excuses the other day they, other than maybe they went a bit quick up the front. The claimant, he's going all right, the claimant. Again, deep first prep and he's been racing a bit keen and get, so they take the blinkers off. Will he be as proficient with the blinkers off? You know, so there's, yeah, there's question marks about a few of the others. I think she's um, she's that lightly race filly with plenty of upside and the big track and the big straight to wind up in. Um, yep, she 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 she'll be hard to beat. It's a good meeting Saturday at Flemington. Um, it's sort of been hit and miss the last few with the real wet tracks and all that, but we're probably only going to be on a soft six, maybe at worst. So, um, could be a day if you've um, sort of dodged Melbourne recently because the real wet tracks might be time to get back involved. Exactly, and uh, they should be getting your mounting yard mail, Nico, via Telegram, twenty five bucks a week. Nico covers the Wednesday and Saturday meets, and uh, Blake McDougall is a nice addition for Oceana Blue. I think he'll be well suited to that one. Let's talk uh, Ipswich. Bit of a lacklustre program for the features, the Cup, uh, the Gay Waterhouse, and the Eyeliner. I went through them yesterday, and nothing really jumped off the page for any of those races. They look uh, pretty tactical affairs, and I was really interested to see that uh, Turbo was – betting away from them so i was pretty happy with that so his first one comes up at it's which race number one i'll go through the market and i'll give you a little bit of a, a spiel of why he likes it race one is the Sierra may wines uh bandamba plate over 1200 meters it's a two-year-old handicap there's honey pot the favorite two dollars northern express 370 spooky spirit nine dollars rosa shiraz ten dollars a few last start winners there and the horse that he likes here is uh is honey pot so it's uh T. Gollan, and there should be some good speed up front, was the run of the race in the Bill Carter when uh, taken back early. So fingers crossed it's a handbrake off, and uh, Ryan Maloney takes a ride here from Barrier 9, which is uh, sometimes uh, tricky at each switch, those wide sort of draws, but um, even money, uh, T. Gollan, probably uh, probably at the prize. Yeah, I got no idea, but I couldn't take even money. Far lap around each switch, Jesus, it's a burial joint for favourites and wide draws and yeah, wide draws at the dogs at each trips, which are just as bad as wide draws at the races. So good luck, but uh, yeah, far out. Speaking of Farla, trainer, did, did we say he made his he made his way to Netflix? Farla, yes. Yeah, so there's yeah, maybe so a watch. can't wait and, to watch and, that. and the cup. The cups on Netflix as well. It is, yeah. And no, I can't wait to show the young fellow Farla. We used to at school at boarding school. We used to have the um, trying to dodge a class. We go see the librarian, and we'd say, "Can we watch? Can we watch Farla in the?" Uh, AV room over there, sweet, sweet. She used to run down the tote, put our bets on. She was one of the mums of the best sorts in our year level, and she used to look after us boys. And then so dodge that. Oh, can we go and give her a list of bets? We wanted to back one. She'd run them down the tote. She was a beauty, Mrs. Maffe. Oh, what a legend! <laughs> but far that would have watched it twenty times when I was at high school. I tell you what, that that story is ten <laughs> times better than anything I sort of found at Ipswich on Saturday. So <laughs> I think I think that was a great interjection there. Oh, uh, so I ch- I chimed into the Royals on Netflix the other day. Liz Hurley and. It's a bit of a piss taker, the royal family. Oh, uh, my God. It's, I've seen worse. So, hang on. You had a holiday. You've chimed into <laughs> a Netflix series during the week here, and you're off for three weeks on Sunday. Geez, I can see why you needed a layup. Uh, I need a spell. I need a spell from you. <laughs> Far too much time with you. <clears throat> Ipswich race number four is the next one that Turbo uh, likes here. It's the Little Birdie Lager, Ipswich Mile. It's a one Metro win handicap. It's over the 1666 at Ippy. And uh, Seymour is a favourite, four dollars twenty. Chikama at uh, four eighty without thinking, four eighty. Olympic class five fifty. Uh, Factory Warrior, eight dollars, and uh, he is eight dollars. The horse that uh, Turbo likes here is without thinking. Uh, poor rides have plagued this horse. He says recently, but a good alley from the mile, and it's got the best turn of foot in the race with a lot of chewed up one paces in this one. So that's from the uh, 
the John Simons and uh, Sheila Laxon uh, yard there without thinking. So that's Luke Tarrant, uh, barrier four, $4.80 at Top Sport. Anything to add there, Well, I'm, I'm just glad that I took the time to, you know, go through the, the, the Ipswich Cup eyeliner and, and Gay Waterhouse. I, I just keep forgetting every week that to, they're not Turbo's races mm. and that he doesn't like to actually cover the, the feature meeting. So, you know, I've got no idea about any of those horses. All right, let's cheering. quickly, Ipswich Cup, Bartholomew Diaz, Our Intrigue, Burbedeck, Street Dancer, Swords Drawn, Ballistic Boy, Young Blood, Smart Meteor, Tristan Saws. Uh, anything that tickles your fancy. Just no speed in the race makes it absolutely diabolical. The favourite would be back last. And, yeah. But I thought Burdebeck could probably improve. Bur- Burdebeck was the horse that but he appealed to me. as well, right? Yeah. If you have to have a bet. And sword's drawn just from that gate and, yeah, I don't know, but it's probably got the best lead-up form and it's the strongest, but it's one pace, but it's still $10. But mm, it's mm. Horrible race. Just absolutely frightening. On, on a different track, I'd uh, I'd be keen to sort of step in at Burdebeck at that price. But, mm. again, it is zip switch. Any uh, any thoughts in the Ipswich Cup, Nico? No, I'm interested to see Bartholomew Dace has uh, gone to Nisham now and sort of kicked on. I always kind of thought he was like a 1,600, sort of 2,000-meter horse. Seems race really well when he's early in the campaign, and they kept stretching him out to sort of 2,400. So um, I'm, I'm wondering whether she's sort of had a similar thought process with sort of keeping him to these shorter distances and sort of getting right out to the staying trips. And uh, he's always been a horse with a lot of ability, so... Um, yeah, he looks well enough placed, but the the map looks a bit sticky. He's not a horse who has a lot of early speed, so um, it'd be sort of heart in the mouth stuff there. I think it will be no matter what you're on in that race, but I yeah. agree. Very, very scary. Oh, mm. I used to love this meeting. There used to be just some horses that stick out and had sort of class edges, and um, this is just de- definitely not the uh, not the same sort the of line meeting. Is yeah, the eyeline is tricky. You got Holyfield five fifty, Vinco, Paladas. Has been the one that back seven into six fifty. I think it was even better earlier. And then Roman Aureus, Emerald Kingdom, and then Charlie's. I thought the horse well, again. You've got a horse like Emerald Kingdom, barrier fourteen though, but mm. uh, nine dollars is a tempting price. And we know that Holyfield's absolutely flying. And then you can make a case for a, a couple in that one. Not right? even going to guess, no? and won't guess in the last. So Tom, mm. Tommy's done a good job. Lady of Luxury's in the last there. I think it's ready to win, but I think it'll run in Sydney. Mm. I think historically horses uh, that have. That are on the backup from the Stratty find uh, obviously the Ipswich Eye Line mm. much much easier, and this horse is just rock hard fit. So I think gun to my head, I'd have to back um, Emerald Kingdom. Anything from you, Nico? No, nah, nothing. Uh, DK, did you bother watching the Stradbroke, or are you just happy to be uh, zero races and not out for the whole Queensland Carnival? Uh, t- uh, actually, I flicked it over with two hundred to go, and saw Ella got a blood steam into the front, and then <laughs> turned it off when it hit the line. That was my. That was all right. That was nice. Good narrative, as I said. Uh, it was which, uh, the Gay Waterhouse Classic. Juan Diva's a favourite. Tahitian Dancer, Lady of Luxury, a Majestic Shot, maybe the best uh, enjoyed of all. Uh, I've backed Tahitian Dancer last two starts, and of course it's run second and third, and uh, been something licked on both occasions, or could have finished a lot closer. Any interest whatsoever? If that race was on a Monday at Musselbrook, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, what is that? How is that a listed race? My God. Yeah. It's just brutal. But, uh, you know. <clears throat> classic whatever. example of just too many. There's just so many races and so many options that it's these old these old sort of old um, secondary type meetings that just fall by the wayside and mm. it's uh, pop Well, one Dave is like a rubber stamped Wednesday horse. He's just a Saturday <laughs> Like, it's just a Saturday <laughs> horse if it is. And it's favourite. And it's probably the one to beat. Like, it's crazy. But, yeah. Mm. Good luck to him. Okay. So that's Ipswich, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, Turbo's on the bounce back, and uh, he might put himself in cotton wool for. Uh, hey, Big Bertha while, will yeah. be there. She'll have the, the chicken soup ready for him. He'll be back. He'll be right. Uh, Punningform.com.au. They were a bit slow off the box yesterday. Must have had a, uh, a data or a feed issue, but it's ultimate comparison tool. Uh, their uh, their class benchmarks and sectionals are brilliant. Not for uh, the pre race, but the post race too. And uh, they've also got the dual noms, the black book service. So. I'd rather be getting a uh, subscription and get behind the paywall of punningform.com.au than any other product in the marketplace because it's got dead set a thousand yards on most other products. I would have thought, and uh, I know that DK and Nico are firmly in that camp as well. Walt, you're going to do a race for us uh, at Rose. Do I get to go first or the mug? Hey, me or the mug? No, you. It's always you. You get to go first. You you have to show first because you're the pro. Mug's the king. Rose Hill Race 4 is the uh, Little Birdie Lager. We're sponsoring a couple of races this uh, this week over Little Birdie Lager Handicap over 1,800 metres. This is you, Walt, 1,800-metre race. Well, Willinga Rufio is $3.60 favourite here, Naval Seal. 
$5.50. African Daisy, $8. Dakuri is $8. Kapangi is $8.50. So there's a couple of dual nominations there. Naval Seal and Kapangi have both uh, been scratched. And then you've got So United and Tinny Winnie, $9. Chad Schofield starting to hit some form. And you got the catch from uh, Bjorn Bakeyard, formerly with Michael Costa. So it's an interesting uh, little up upgrade into the uh, the deep end of Rose Hill from the Michael Costiard who's uh, departing us. But uh, Linga Rufio is the one that you like here. Well, let's have a look at him in the red and black. He's making it all out in front. Yeah, so come out of a maiden at Hawkesbury uh, into this race. And it wasn't an easy day, even though it Rose Hill to sort of lead and, and win here. And I just, this is probably the key to this horse, what it does in this next or from when we turned it on to here, just puts him away in arguably the worst part of the track there sort of hard fence sort of wobbles around it's got that much energy it's sort of wobbling and still and still running away from him um you know the horses behind just had every conceivable to to run this horse down and, and it was probably entitled to get a little bit tired late there it's it's gone out quick come home quick uh, there's not much to, to sort of pot this horse and sort of similar to what nico said in melbourne this is a a lightly raced uh uh, horse, you know, getting up to this sort of 1,800, 2,000 metre range and just looks to have, you know, pure upside, should just go straight to the front, uh, trying to find dangers. Probably Tinny Winnie was the the one that, you know, it's it's put in two really strong performances, but a bit of a, a gut buster last start loses. J-Mac needs a little bit of a, a good ride early from Schofield to sort of find the fence if it does, and, and I was a little bit scared of Dakuri, but, you know, sort of $4 this horse. I expected this horse to be even money and, and may get out a little bit. I think it'll probably firm up. Um, there's a little bit of a concern about some scratchings. There's dual noms. Um, but, like, so I could naval. So I think this horse would handle naval seal no problem. Um, yeah, I, I just can't see um, too much downside of this horse at this stage. It looks like it's just a, a real contender for uh, all sorts of big races if it uh, keeps going ahead. Who would you rather put on? Reese Jones claiming two, or Tyler Schiller claiming two. To, in what we're talking about, no, just in, in a horse race? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, there's not much in it. There's not much. I, I'd rather, he's not a very good rider of leaders at all, um, Reese. So I'd rather be with Tyler. He's sort of riding for Newnham, and that I think he's got a much better handle on it. So this horse will be heading forward, back in a field. There's not much between them. Not much between them. They can both put in a a one out of ten or a twelve out of ten. There's the, they're both you know predators for a reason at the moment. Plenty of only more polished. Dylan Gibbons is the one who's showing that he's got a lot, few more strings to his bow at the moment. He's claiming three, so uh, he'll be just he'll just keep riding winners for the next three or four months, like they're uh, they're giving him away. Have you recovered mentally from Reese Jones riding so many winners last night? Well, I just love that. He, yeah, like I think three of the three of his wins last week were when he got cast five wide, no cover, and probably didn't realise it was the place to be. So you know, it was actor God wins the two year old of the first. He's got to the right part of the track, actor God, but. Uh, yeah, just watch his, watch his ride in the highway and watch his ride in the other races. He's, he's okay. Like, he's an apprentice. As I said, he, he claims for a reason. He's just, his problem is that he's got a huge range of, uh, you know, uh, tactics and, and the way he actually rides. He's a, you know, he's a 1 to a 12 at the moment. You need to sort of tighten that up. Ellen Hennessy? Yeah, she's about the same. There's, there's, there's a few of them. They can, they can ride well at times. They suit certain horses. you just got to be very careful and pick your spots. All right, it's time for Mugs Moral. Hi, guys. Mugs Moral this week. The mug is in shocking form, but I think we might have the winner this week. We're going race eight, Rose Hill. Number one, Subark. This horse looks a promising horse. It's got Barry 11, 62 with three kilo claim of Ellen Hennessy. It was a great run at the Gold Coast on a heavy eight. Great, run, great win on a heavy eight. At Dubbo, this horse looks like it can hold its form and run a good race. The 1500 looks no problem, coming back 100 metres. So, guys, this week it is race eight, number one, Subark. And if you if that gets scratched and goes to Melbourne, because I know it's double nommed, I'm going to go race seven, Sydney, in the McKell Cup. Number... Five surf dancer. Rachel King put this in a great spot on the lead in a slow race, slowly run race. There's no speed in this race, so it should just jump from barrier six, get the lead and just travel very good in front. Barrier six, no problem. The distance, no distance. The breeding says it can run the distance. So guys, Bugs Moral is race eight, number one, Subark. And if that gets scratched and goes to Melbourne, 
Race seven, number five at Rose Hill Surf Dancer. Good luck. And what does the mug say when we find a winner? Go find your bookie. Good luck. Tell you what, he's honest, the mug. He's going shocking, but uh, he's going to bounce back this week, hopefully. And Ellen Hennessy might be the, the one to steer him in with Annabelle Nisha. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple of things he sort of outlined. It's, all, it's form's been on heavy tracks out wide at, at the moment, Sabak, and it's like a really strong one pace sort of horse. So I'm just hoping she can sort of get a bit aggressive on him at times um, from those wide draws, and I, she probably needs to on this <laughs> horse. And I thought it'd sort of go up in distance. So 1,500 on a dry deck is probably the query. If she gives it an overly aggressive ride and sort of leads outside leader, I think it'll it'll run well. Mm. Um, interesting to note that Wicklow's in the race, so he's quickly sacked it. Well, um, he said he's never again. He's quickly sacked the mug. He's, he's not he's, he's, you know, once bitten, twice shy of the, the mug. So, But he, he's right. Like it's going to be back and wide on, a, on what should be like six-metre rail at Rose Hill. You'd expect him to be up and flying. It is a bit... Weird, like it's the first time this track's been playing a bit dodgy on the inside after these big wet. But um, six meter, if it's a true good four six meter rail, it should be up and up and in. Should be the place to be, and hopefully, just a bark. It's a cross outside leader. I was surprised it's like eight bucks. So mm. I, I'm definitely in the mugs camp this week. Irish I legend, first right up barrier one. Yeah, so it's a it's another horse. It's a big query runner coming over from the UK. It's got some serious form. I think, um, I, you know, off the top of my head, I think it's run second and third behind some nice horses over there. Uh, a couple of trials for Les Bridge, and again, like, how would you know? That stable very rarely sort of. I doubt this would be a target for for Les to go out and try and knock over a fifteen hundred meter race with it first up. But um, obviously, a serious horse and more than capable from the inside draw if it gets a nice run of of running a race in, against these sort of horses. I was going to say, Nico, did you see the new the new combo? Did you see what he shoved down? He's had for dinner the other night after the thing here. Yeah, the combo, the the, no, the, the beautiful sure. the pasta carbonara piled on top of the chicken schnitzel. <laughs> Put them together. Hard to beat. Hey? PR, it's that's the, the combo. Oh, is a good beer. Dipping it? Eh? I don't know. I don't know about the carbonara, Beautiful. though. That's a bit heavy on oh. top. Like, even spaghetti bolognese is heavy, but it's good. Imagine that after about 10 beers at the race, you come home and eat that. <laughs> that would be absolutely <laughs> heaven. Oh. The other the other race he mentioned is, is Tip Surf Dance. Surf in Dance. Case. There is another jockey. query horse there. Um, in, ah, in King. The, yeah, no, the other. It's Youth Spirit. And it's a Waterhouse horse having its first start over here from the UK as well um, with serious form. And it's been improving through its trials and just looked um, – looked. Uh, actually, I was surprised. It's, it's only $5.50. I thought you might get better than that, but it's it's worth keeping an eye on your spirit. Skyman finally draws a gate, so they might actually put him in the race, unlike last start where they just – seemingly like they just went around. Last start, they just sat back, went around the entire field and never had a chance. So Pike from two, there may be a bit of a tactics change there. Um because he was given no chance last start. It looked like the perfect setup for it last time too. And I'd, there'd be a lot of punters that would just be kicking their hat that would have backed Skyman last time. Mm. Be absolutely furious. And that's just that's Mate. just what happens with <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, you can tell I backed it too, Nico. But it's, it's Chris Waller and these things happen sometimes. That's a tricky race, that one. Huh? That's scary. a tricky race, that one. There's a, there's a few scary. different angles there. Very scary. Dr. Drill. Dr. Drill's flying this prep. He's ran huge first up and then second last start. Does get J-Mac off though, but he's – He's right in any race he runs in. He never runs a bad one. So the the only horse that arrives off a PR is Surf Dancer. He's found it. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, it's short. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Sab- Sabak gets the uh, gets a chocolate some mug and he's back in the winning circle. We love it when mugs backing winners. So good luck to him. Top Sport Big Bet Time Ipswich Race Nine Number Five Tahitian Dancer. This could be my money five hundred at six fifty. You know it's mine because I've missed the price. Uh, as we said. Uh, Horse in really good form here, but um, Ipswich is tricky. And mm. then you've got uh, Flemington Race 6, number 3, Edison, 500 at $9. Is this your race, Nico, or has John McLeod done this one? <laughs> no, I've, I've done this one, actually, unlike unlike Turbo, just sort of um, taking a tag team operation there. Look, uh, Blinkers go on for the first time, or Blinkers go on first time new stable. They're on again. He's obviously copped them sometime in his career. Um I thought the, the run last start was better than first up, and he jumped out really well leading to this prep. Billy's flying. Nick Ryan, as DK said before, you just want to find him, and there there could be a sort of a bit to play out in that race. There's a few horses there that are sort of not near their best or not 1,400-meter horses. So um, it does look like a race where if he's sort of getting towards somewhere near his best with the blinkers potentially going on, um, you could definitely find him. I, I nearly tipped him, to be honest, on the show. I think okay. he's definitely in the game there. Blinkers, yeah, it's Blinkers intent, mate. Intent. Yep. Who's got it now? Nick Ryan. Nick Ryan. Edison. So mm. Who used to have it? Gay. No, no, uh, the Uncle Bjorn. Uncle Bjorn. The, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I might, might have to get uh, 
our, our man in the know with snows up at the Gold Coast this weekend, so I might have to get Snowy's mail there from the Nick Ryan camp. He usually you know, gives us a bit of a, uh, a tip off there, which is uh, which is handy. So I'll, uh, I'll tweet that out. I'll put it in the Discord chat if uh, the Ryan camp are bullish that one. So that's race six, number three, Edison. Uh, and then the other one is uh, race nine, number two, Joviality in Rose Hill. Are you allowed to talk about this race or are you over your threshold for races covered no, right. at uh, Rose Hill on Saturday? Because I, I don't want to upset anyone. Do you want to give me the feel? I know. I a, thought, I know, I was back to jockey management. mate. I just had the PSTDSD just kicked in again there. I just started twitching. I thought I wasn't I'd talking about a race that I wasn't supposed to. Uh, <laughs> what a, I actually, I really like this race as in I think her in a way is a very good horse. Dylan Gibbons, we talked about, should find a nice spot. And I, I really think Lady of Luxury is ready to win. I hoped it was back to 1,200, but inside draw, Timmy, if he box seats her or three back the rent fence and has any luck, I think, you know, they're no no value, but they'll they'll run very well. So it's not an easy race to win. And Chris Williams is absolutely cast. Not even I, and I'm going on record, can bring him back from the death of uh, jockey castism. Uh, Chris Williams. Chris, Chris Williams. Williams. He he needs to be you know riding it. He needs to go see the drums. Well, he needs to find somewhere where he can ride some winners. So and he just all he does is ride in town. So he needs to go somewhere where he can ride some winners and get some confidence back. He should move up here. That's uh, everyone washed up moves to the Gold Coast. Is that why we're here? Yeah, I was here before you. Does that mean I've been gone longer? Probably. Okay, no worries. DK, I'm comfortable with there's room. There's room, DK. Oh. <laughs> I'm a soft seven iron away, I tell you. Yeah, could, yeah. <laughs> tell you. Couldn't nearly nearly gone, but I'll just hang on for a bit longer down here. Nico, hey, no red wine to... by the fire up there, is there? See? That's what you're missing, Scoop. Lloyd was telling us he was watching the football last week by the fire with his red wine. So you can you can come up here and watch the football with Lloyd. <laughs> Beautiful. That's my go. That's the only thing I look forward to. The red wine by the fire is the best part of winter. I have to ask the missus, Nico, because Neo, you know, he's, he's going steady there. Still waiting for Nico to send me in the receipt of the uh, the dinner that I owe him. So I'm happy to pay, Nico, so make sure you make it uh, one big good one. <laughs> and I, I think, we, we at least need like a, well, a snapshot or a, just a, like a out the front of the restaurant shot or something. We need to confirm who it is for the 500, do we or not? Mm, oh, I don't know. Like, you just you just don't know where the, when the snapper artsy sort of bobs up. That would be a job for someone like Turbo or a little – Little weasel out there. So if uh, T Dogs or someone can leak us a pick, it'll be uh, yeah, put enormous. on another free dinner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> I'll have no money left. I'll be broke after Bali anyway. All right. Hopefully we've um, we steered everyone into a winner. DK, uh, I'm not sure what the tonic is for ribs, but uh, what do you do? You just sort of sit. Can't and suffer. do anything. Can't do anything. Just got to ride it out. So yeah, there's been a slight improvement probably yeah in the last 24 hours. Have but, you had um, to cheer any home with it? Like. Can you still ride them out while on the straight? Or? Oh, I'll give Masterful a good kick, but um, especially when that thing kicked three in front at that 200, I thought, gee, give him a cheer home. But um, no, I'll be right. Yeah, I'll be right. Uh, I think Donald Duck, Donald Duck Saturday, Nico, and I haven't looked ahead of far, far further ahead of field of that. But still at wet tracks down here. It's heavy 10 today. Um, yeah. Anyway, still dealing with it. Geelong looked all right. And that, it didn't look like your sort of uh, no your sort of meeting. Yeah, I did. I, I went a deep dive there, but yeah, a lot of first starters in that. What about the synth though? On, when was that? Ballarat, completely cactus. Like the kickback was just horrendous on the weekend. I don't know what they're going to do about it, but um, on the, not on the weekend, on Tuesday or Monday, whenever it was, but packing them. Didn't watch a race didn't from you? Ballarat. There you go. Old BZ. Old BZ's been demoted. What about BZ? I haven't, I haven't ribbed him up yet. Old BZ got sent to Ballarat on Tuesday to do the on-course interviews after the race. And he was doing the weather report on on, on Twitter. <laughs> he's been airborne, BZ. He's, he's, he's been in the stables mucking him. He must be getting ready. He must be thinking he's on the way out or something. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> he, he wants he wants to redo the weather rating. So if he wants the feels like temperature for the that that to be the temperature that he actually lists. So if it's twenty but feels like fifteen, he wants fifteen to be the noted noted. <laughs> he's spot on. He's spot on. I tell you, it's ten degrees, and then oh no, the wind chill feels like five. So. Why isn't it five degrees? I don't understand. The temperature's <laughs> the temperature. He's spot on, BZ. I'll agree with him there. I can't believe that. The- oh, last time I went to Ballarat, I think it was nine degrees, and it, it said feels like 2.8. So <laughs> that was fun. I think oh, every- I everyone's got a different feels like. Tradies, some tradies wear shorts all, all year round. They, they think it feels like 20 degrees when it's poor. Oh. Ear blokes are lunatics. Yeah. I need to freshen up. All right, so three-week break. We're back on July 14th. All the boys will be still betting. We might uh, continue the weekly email, so we'll try and get a best bet while we're at Can we get out. Muggs Moral at least on Twitter or something? We can't go three weeks <laughs> without that. Might be Mug only. Yeah, that's all right. M- he can cover all four states or whatever we're doing. <laughs> Carnivals, do the lot. 
I think that's a good a good idea. Yeah. All right. Enjoy your red wine in the uh, winter break, and uh, I think everyone's ready for the freshen up. But um, we'll be back bigger than ever, uh, and we'll steer all the way through spring and into the summer. And a big thanks to uh, from me to uh, Borco, who does all the video stuff, all our major sponsors, and the boys down in Melbourne keeping uh, the office warm down there. Nico and DK holding uh, holding up the ship because it's an uh, absolute madness to be with Bolt. See you guys. Enjoy, enjoy the holiday. <laughs> <laughs>